So you guys requested a warrior ultimate tier list after the guardian one that I did the other day, and I shall deliver. As always, these ults are being ranked against each other and not against other ultimates or abilities in general, and they're being placed on how useful they are overall in the game. Factors like their damage, CC, utility, healing, and all that stuff is taken into account with these placements. And if an ultimate is in S+, plus, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the best ultimate in the game. Likewise, if an ultimate is in B or C, it doesn't mean it's completely terrible, they're just in comparison to other warrior ultimates. If you do enjoy this one, then don't forget to subscribe for more stuff from me. We're nearing 30k subscribers, which is just insane. Thank you to everyone who's joined up so far. But let's jump in. Achilles. I think this is A+. It's a resettable execute, which is always going to be incredibly strong when used right. Granted, you do take more damage when you're executing people, but I think with Achilles ultimate, if you manage to execute two or even three people in a fight, that fight is kind of over anyway. And even if the Achilles dies because he's taking a lot of damage, that doesn't really matter if he's executed three people. This can also be used to escape if you need to use it that way or to chase kills, though it's obviously not as great as its primary function of being an execute. However, it's not all sunshine and rainbows with this ultimate, it's definitely missable. I'm not saying it's easy to miss or anything, but compared to a lot of big AoE warrior ultimates that are pretty much impossible to miss, Achilles ultimate can miss if people are duking it correctly. There's also not really much utility to this at all. It pretty much has one purpose, and that's to execute people. You're not going to be doing too much else with this ability, it doesn't have the versatility that a lot of other warrior ultimates do have. It's just really good at killing people. Amaterasu, this is definitely S+, plus, one of the best warrior ultimates in the game. It does great damage, more than most warrior ultimates if you hit all three charges. Does it in a pretty sizable AoE? It's not a massive circle, but the cone in front of her is pretty large, and if you're aiming it correctly, you could definitely hit multiple people with this in a teamfight if they aren't jumping away or anything. But really, what you're wanting this for is the insane CC. The slow is pretty good, but the 2 second stun is just insane, it's pretty much instant death for any squishy that doesn't have a CC immunity ready for it, and that can't be understated. It's also incredibly easy to hit as long as you burn someone's jump first so they can't jump over it, since you're able to move and are CC immune while channeling, and this ultimate does have that versatility that the Achilles ultimate that we just talked about doesn't really have. This is definitely one of the better warrior ultimates in the game, perhaps even the best. Bologna's Eagles Rally, S tier. The flag stats on this ability are still underrated, despite many people saying, oh, the flag stats that you get from this, the power of the protections and all that stuff is so strong, I, pe I feel like people still underrate this. It's insane for objective fights and sieging, where you have like fights in sort of close in areas where people aren't moving about too much around a gold fury or a fire giant or around an enemy phoenix or something, you can really fight with those bonus protections and power and get a lot of value out of this. The damage on this is decent, but nothing insane. It's pretty average for warrior ultimates. The leap is nice as well to chase or run over walls and stuff like that. And of course, the stun is pretty easy to land in a large AoE, so you're not going to be hitting like 5 people with this, but you can definitely hit 1 or 2 very easily. And it's pretty much on demand with the speed of the leap. And also, it has a 75 second cooldown compared to most other ultimates on 90 seconds, so if someone's trying to CC immune the stun, like a Scylla's trying to ult the stun to block it with a 90 second cooldown, you have a 75 second cooldown, so you can just keep ulting her on cooldown and you'll eventually stun her. Shark, A+. I did consider putting this lower because I'm not really a big fan of Shark's ultimate, but the 3 second silence is just objectively strong. That long of a silence on gods that are reliant on their abilities like mages in teamfights can be insanely strong and can definitely be more powerful in certain situations than something like a 1 second stun. It does decent damage, it's not completely like insane, but it's on the top end for warrior ultimates. And obviously it hits in a massive AoE and like Bologna ultimate, it is on that lower cooldown of 75 seconds so you can catch people out without their CC immunity. And of course having that fairly long duration CC immunity and 50% damage mitigation on Shaq ultimate is great for dodging things as well. Kukulan, S. For this one, I'm only considering the normal form and not the rage form ultimate, since the rage form ultimate isn't really his ultimate, it's more of just like an extra ability to use in rage form, and it's generally not built to be as strong as a real ultimate. But for his normal form ultimate, this is very similar to a Sylvanas ultimate, in that it's just a massive AoE knockup that has a bit of a charge up time. And to be honest, that is always going to be strong due to the fact that knockups can't be purified unless you pre-beats. On the Guardian tier list, I had Sylvanas' ult in S+, and that is partly because it's S+, in comparison to other Guardian ultimates. But it's also because the wind up on Sylvanas' ultimate is much shorter than the wind up on Kukulin's ultimate, so people can't dodge it as easily as you can a Kukulin ultimate or, you know, prepare your beads for when the knockup's going to hit you. But for people that don't react in time or don't have beads, that massive knockup is going to be insanely powerful in pretty much any team fight. The damage on it isn't really amazing, to be honest, but the CC is insane. Erlang Shen, B. I think this ultimate is underrated, but still not that good. And this is coming from someone who mains Erlang and really likes the way his ultimate is designed. The heal is really nice and can be insanely powerful with the ridiculous amount that it heals, but it sometimes doesn't come through if you don't activate it correctly in a teamfight. 
Like, you could blink in all three people with the taunt, and then the heal doesn't actually come through, and you just get bursted down. Also, it has no damage, which, when you consider the rest of Erlang's kit, kind of makes sense, but almost every other warrior ultimate in the game has damage in some form, and this one just has none, which is a downside, even though that is the way the ultimate is designed. The taunt is very short, especially if anyone has, like, a stack of DR on them or two, it's going to be under 1 seconds, which is really not that great. And to actually use this properly is similar to a lot of Guardian ultimates, you pretty much require Blink to use this ultimate effectively. Guan Yu, this is definitely S tier. It does absolutely ridiculous damage if you can stay on the halt and swing for the full duration with the escalating damage, it can easily do over a thousand to people. The 1.5 second stun, which boosts up to 2 seconds if boosted by your passive, is just completely insane. As with Amaterasu's ultimate, an on demand 2 second stun that's relatively easy to hit can't be understated. But it is still very delayed unless you just jump on the horse and jump straight back off, which is kind of wasting it. With Amaterasu's ultimate, the stun comes through quite quick, but you also still get all the other benefits of the ability. With Guan Yu, if you want the stun instantly, you have to forego the rest of the benefits and jump off the horse straight away. And then otherwise, if you want to get the full damage out, it's very predictable that the stun's coming and people can dodge it. But this could definitely cause a lot of chaos in fights, and does some of the highest damage of any warrior ultimate in the game if you fully charge it. Hercules, B+, I think this one's probably bordering on B as well. This does a shit ton of damage, but not much else. The amount of damage it does is great for early to mid game kills and things, but it falls off super hard when you need team fighting ultimates from your warriors later on in the game. I think past about 15 minutes in any conquest game, I would rather have something like an Amaterasu ultimate than a Hercules ultimate. And granted in like a laning phase scenario, Hercules ultimate can be incredibly powerful to snowball you into the late game, once you get there, it's really not that strong. So Horus ultimate is a asterisk, in that this is very hard to rate and hard to use correctly. I feel like people still haven't properly figured out how to really use this ultimate, and it does require a lot of communication with your team, so it's best on teams with full comms. This ultimate can be insane, but can also be pretty terrible depending on how you use it, and I'm not really prepared to put it in like a high tier or a low tier, I'm just going to leave it in A for now. If you guys have any thoughts on Horus ultimate, or whether it's really strong or really weak, leave those below. I'd be interested to sort of gauge the community opinion on this one, because I really don't know. King Arthur, A+, probably bordering on S. Taking both of the ultimates into account here, the ranged stun is really nice but quite short and quite hard to hit multiple people with it. And the 85 energy ultimate is basically Nejar ultimate at a lower cooldown, and could be quite good setup for mages and the like, but it is mostly for the insane amount of damage that it does and the self banish. Honestly, King Arthur's ultimates on their own aren't that strong, it's the insanely low cooldowns that they have that makes them very strong, which is why it's sort of bordering on S tier. If these were ultimates on regular cooldowns, they wouldn't be that good. But because of those cooldowns, I think it's definitely A+. Nike Ultimate, also A+. This doesn't have a direct hard CC like a Cullen Ultimate or an Abzurasu Ultimate, but the 6 second slow that it applies is very hard to deal with for a lot of gods. Granted it can be countered with things like Hebo Carpet or Sprint or Winged Blade, and even sometimes you can just beads it if you feel it's worth it. If you're getting people CC immune ultimates or their beads or forcing them to buy an item just to deal with your ultimate and you can hit multiple people with it, that's pretty strong. Also you can easily get up to a thousand or even more health boost late game with this which is insane. You can wait out that health shield, it's not permanent health, so if you do just wait out, I believe it's 10 seconds that Nike gets this for, then you can just kill her afterwards, but waiting out 10 seconds and not targeting her is potentially dangerous. And also this ultimate does very low damage compared to a lot of other warrior ultimates because of all the rest of the stuff it does, and it's also on a higher cooldown than normal. So Odin's ultimate, I really wanted to put this in like B or C or something, but that's probably a bit of an overreaction, I just really dislike the way Odin is designed. So I'm going to put it in A tier for now. It's just way too easily countered nowadays. It used to be an incredibly broken ultimate, and a couple of years ago I would have probably put it in S or even S+, plus because of the insane amount of gods it counters in one ultimate. But the fact that you can jump and your team can buy Phantom, and there's so many ways to counter this ability, it just doesn't seem that strong right now, especially after they took off the attack speed reduction from the ability. Before it was sort of a counter to healers and a pseudo counter to auto attack gods, now it's literally just a counter to healers, that's all this ability does now really. It also does very well against low mobility gods like Ahibo for example, you can lock him in the cage and he can't get out, but his team can just buy Phantom, and it feels like this ultimate doesn't really do enough for me to warrant putting it very high. The only reason I'm putting it in A is because I feel like a lot of other people will say this ultimate is really good, I want to put it in like C tier, but I'm not going to do that. It's pretty much just a healer counter at this point, and I really dislike the way his ability is designed, Odin's entire kit to be honest I think needs a rework. He's one of the most prominent gods in Norse mythology that a lot of people know about, and he's just complete garbage, I wish that wasn't the case, but it is. Anyway, many rant aside, let's move on to Osiris, which I'm going to put in A tier. This does great damage, some of the highest in the warrior class, although it is sort of, it's not single target, but you can't really hit too many people with this easily. 
It has that 100% healing reduction, or complete anti-heal, I believe it's called now, because 100% is, is a different thing, but yeah, it has that complete anti-heal that can shut down healers very well. It's also on a lower cooldown, which is really great for countering other warrior ultimates or other ultimates in general that are on 90 seconds, and you can just cast it more, which is obviously great. It activates your full passive for chasing people down afterwards, which is another nice benefit. But it does lack that big CC like a lot of other warriors have, and from your warriors and guardians, usually at least one of them on the team needs to have that big initiating CC ultimate off a follow-up initiation, so Osiris doesn't really have that. But still, I think this ultimate is more specialised to do certain things, and if you pick an Osiris onto the right comp and target the right people with this ultimate, it can be really strong, so that's why it's an A for me. Moving on to Sun Wukong's ultimate, this is B tier. For me, this is just really not that strong. It does mediocre damage, 25% of your health is nice, but nothing insane. Erlang ult usually heals for more than that with some actual CC and utility as well. It's one of the best escapes in the game using this, like you're almost just completely unkillable when you have this up as Wukong, especially combined with the bird, but that's all it is really. It's an escape and safety tool, it's not really good for aggression. And for me, I like to have the flexibility of being able to use my ultimate defensively or offensively for the situation, which is another reason why an ultimate like Hercules, for example, is in low tier. But Wukong's ultimate just feels like it does nothing unless you're using it to escape. Which I don't think is really a good design for an ultimate in my opinion, and it's quite weak. And the penultimate ultimate, we have tier, B+. The CC on this is very weak, having just a slow is just not really that great for an ultimate. Nike's does it quite well because the slow is incredibly long lasting, but Tia's isn't as long lasting. It does decent damage and obviously is great for mobility with the CC immunity and being able to jump over walls. And the lower cooldown once it's ranked up for chasing people down if they're ulting. It just doesn't really compare to some of the top tier ultimates really, I'm sure a lot of you can see why tier ultimate isn't really that great. You pick tier for his other qualities, not really for his ultimate to be honest. And finally, Vamana's ultimate is definitely S+. This is the one warrior ultimate that can actually rival Amaterasu, even though they both do incredibly different things. This ultimate is literally where all of Vamana's power comes from. If you think about playing Vamana, you're thinking about it because of this ultimate, and that's why it's definitely one of the most strong ultimates in the game. He becomes insanely hard to kill, if he's ahead he becomes pretty much impossible to kill, gets bonus power, hugely long duration CC immunity, and can easily decimate multiple squishies in the fight with just one ultimate. With the right build, this ultimate can solo carry a game, which is why I think it's definitely S+. Especially if you combine this on a team with another warrior or guardian that has a big initiation CC ultimate that can cover that side of the spectrum, the mana can just go ham with this ultimate and just decimate teams. But that's about it from me. Let me know who you want to cover next of the mages, assassins and hunters, and I'll do that one next of course. And if you did enjoy, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe so you can see more videos like this from me in the future, and I'll catch you guys later. Have a great day, and peace out you nerds.